It's you. You're Captain America? Captain America has been around in Marvel since 1941, and a few characters have gone by the name since then. In the MCU, we will now see Sam Wilson, aka The Falcon, take the mantle of Captain America from Steve Rogers. But have you ever thought of who would win in a fight? Captain America or Captain America? Let's take a look at these two and see who would come out on top. As I stated before, Steve Rogers has been Captain America since 1941 in Marvel Comics, so he definitely has experience up his sleeve. A scrawny kid from Brooklyn turned into a super soldier through a lab experiment, Steve has been a major symbol of heroism throughout Marvel lore. But what are his strengths, his weaknesses, his secret weapons? Let's take a dive into what makes Steve Rogers Captain America. So we all know Steve Rogers is a super soldier as he was injected with the super soldier serum. This gave a man with a desire to serve his country the ability to do so. Steve wasn't the only one to have the super soldier serum tested on him in the history of Marvel, but he appears to be the only one that came out of the experiment as the perfect man. He had the courage, devotion, and mindset that every soldier should have when wanting to serve their country, and this serum really seemed to enhance those personality traits of Steve, along with his physique, strength, speed, and so forth. As you may have seen in the first Captain America movie, Steve Rogers turned into an incredibly strong individual after taking the serum. Right after the experiment, he goes on a high-speed chase to stop the Hydra agent who infiltrated the lab the Super Soldier experiment was occurring in. I say high-speed chase, but only the bad guy was driving a car. Steve's stamina and speed were greater than any average human's, so he clearly had to show off his new abilities by running barefoot through the streets of New York. Hopping over fences, crashing through store windows, and jumping from one moving car to another, Rogers put on a show of his new powers and it was quite impressive. The star-spangled man with a plan even used the door of the getaway driver's car as his very first shield, and it was a subtle hint towards his future weapon as it did have a star on it. Yeah, I know. Following that, one of the most iconic parts of this chase was Steve chasing the Hydra agent underwater while the man was getting away in a high-tech submarine. Did that stop Steve from succeeding? Patience. Absolutely not. He took him out of the submarine with ease and took the man back to land. The Hydra Man sacrificed his life for the greater mission of Hydra, but this was a great display of what Steve Rogers could do as Captain America moving forward. So Steve Rogers as Captain America has super speed, strength, stamina, and durability, but he also has a few more worthy powers and abilities to take note of. For instance, Steve Rogers can lift up Mjolnir, you know, Thor's mighty hammer. It was teased in Age of Ultron that he could lift it up, but in the final fight of Endgame, we do see Rogers lift it and use it in battle. I remember watching that moment in the theater and my jaw dropped. Can this man do everything? Another thing worth mentioning is that he does have superhuman healing abilities. Nothing to the extent of Deadpool's healing powers, but the Super Soldier Serum allows him to heal from wounds and deadly injuries faster than the normal body ever could. I know we didn't get to Sam Wilson yet, but Steve looks like he's got this fight in the bag. I could do this all day. Now all heroes have their weaknesses, and Steve does have a few that can make him vulnerable in a battle. One of them is that he doesn't have major ranged attacks. Sure, he can throw his shield and be pretty effective with it, but if the enemy deflects it away or it gets stuck somewhere, Steve has to go retrieve it instead of having it bounce back at him. He doesn't carry a gun on him, so that ultimately leads him to his fist. Again, he's very skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but if his opponent is on the opposite side of the battleground, I don't think his fists will do much damage. Once again, I feel a wave of depression surging over me. Another weakness of his is his lack of knowledge in tech. Being alive during World War II and then frozen in ice for about 70 years, you're going to miss out on some things. In the Avengers movie, Iron Man tells Captain America to check out the control panel to see what the problem is. Cap can only share that it runs on electricity and nothing more. I mean, can you blame the guy? The man wakes up after a 70 year long nap, runs into the heart of the blazing Times Square, and then all of a sudden he's fighting aliens next to a green hulk and a man in flying armor. I don't think he's gonna know how to work a high tech control panel. While this next thing could be seen as a strength, in Cap's situation, it's more of a weakness. Steve loves to look after his friends. What about the others? Like Bucky, for example. In Captain America The Winter Soldier, Bucky is now the Winter Soldier under Hydra's control. 
Cap tries and tries again to get Bucky to turn back to the friend he once knew, but it just leads to more problems and fights. This also leads to the events of Captain America Civil War, where Cap defends Bucky and refuses to sign the Sokovia Accords. Yes, it's nice that he's looking out for his friend, but this did cause a German airport to get destroyed and most of the Avengers to part ways before the events of Infinity War. I'm not saying it's all Cap's fault, but when he's set in his ways, He's set in his ways. So that's all I'm going to touch upon with Steve at this moment, as I would like to give Sam Wilson's Captain America some attention now. Come on! I know it seems like Steve would have this dub with no problem, but Sam definitely has some moves that can knock Steve off his feet. I can do this all day. Let's get into it. Sam Wilson debuted as the Falcon in Marvel Comics in 1969, almost 30 years after Captain America first debuted, and the Falcon actually showed up to Captain America's aid on a tropical island. Since then, the rest is history. Now I know this fight is between Captain America and Captain America, but the Falcon has some pretty cool powers in the comics that aren't shown in the MCU, and a few of them correlate to his new suit upgrade when he becomes Captain America. Sam actually has telepathic powers with birds in the comics. While Red Wing is a robotic machine in the MCU, Red Wing is an actual bird in the comics, and Sam brought the fellow companion under his wing on many adventures. The two would work together to take down many foes as Red Wing would be the eye in the sky for the Falcon. Sam also trained with Steve Rogers, so his fighting skills are very impressive as we all know how skilled Steve is in hand-to-hand -hand combat. The Falcon didn't receive his retractable wings until the Black Panther made it for him in the comics. This can kind of be related to how Sam Wilson gets his Captain America suit in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier series from Wakanda. Isn't it great how Marvel lore all connects? His wings allow him to fly at high speeds and maneuver out of the way of enemy projectiles. In the MCU, we see him for the first time in Captain America Winter Soldier, and it's pretty cool seeing him fly around with his wing jetpack while helping out Captain America. He is a trained pilot, which is why he's very capable of flying at incredible speeds with just his fancy jetpack and goggles. Now transitioning to his role as Captain America, Sam does still maintain his wings as I mentioned before. When fighting the Flag Smashers in the finale of his TV show, we see him using his wings not only to fly, but to maintain his balance and stance while in battle. While battling Carly, a super soldier by the way, his wings pop out and stick to the ground to stop him from being knocked back. You can also see them being used while he is doing his various flips and acrobatics. Sam Wilson is also trained with guns as we can see in the MCU, so that is good when it comes to more long-ranged combat. He's used machine gun-like weaponry a few times on the big screen, sometimes while flying, so he definitely can become a huge threat in a battle even when he is mobile. So we know most of Sam Wilson's powers, but let's talk about what his strengths are when in the heat of a battle. While his comic book counterpart isn't familiar of the technological world, the MCU Sam Wilson is. He has a bunch of gadgets as the Falcon and Captain America. While we only saw him as Captain America once in the finale of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, it's safe to say that having a suit made from Wakanda means he will still have some fancy tech to use other than his wings and shield. This is a huge advantage if going up against Steve Rogers, as I mentioned earlier that Steve is not really up to date on the latest gizmos and gadgets. Another strength that he has, which is probably obvious at this point, is his ability to fly. His wings allow him to be agile and move around, making him a difficult target to hit. Again, his wings are useful for both airborne and ground attacks, and can even be used as an extra shield to protect him from anything coming his way. So in a way, you can say that Sam Wilson's Captain America has two shields, which is one more than Steve Rogers has. This next one might be seen as more of a personality trait, but I see it as a strength for Sam. He's a lot more lighthearted and can see the funny side of things while in the midst of heroics. <laughs> I got him, right? <laughs> sure, it's important to be serious and mission focused, but Sam's ability to see the fun stuff kind of reminds me of how Tony Stark was in the MCU. Cooper? And we all know how successful he was. Well, besides allowing his technology to fall into the wrong hands constantly. Hey, what a surprise! Steve was always focused on the mission and had a serious tone, which is great when it comes to being a leader, but it's also important to breathe a little and crack a joke or two. No offense, Steve. One more thing I'd like to mention, which you might all disagree with, is that Sam Wilson is human. Not that Steve isn't, or most of Marvel's heroes aren't, but he isn't a super soldier and he wasn't bitten by a radioactive bird. He's just a skilled fighter and a pilot with some fancy technology to help him out. 
Sound familiar? He has the ability to connect with people better because he relates to them more than some of our famous heroes. He just wants to do the right thing in his life and help others. Again, not that Steve Rogers didn't want to do that as Cap, but I think this helps Sam with courage and gives him the motivation he needs while in battle. Alright, now to the weaknesses. A major thing that Sam seems to struggle with as the new Captain America is the courage of taking the mantle of his friend. He did seem to overcome this towards the end of his show, but I'm sure he will have some inner conflict still in Captain America New World Order. Sometimes your worst enemy is yourself. And that seems to be the case with Sam Wilson. He has the ability and strength to be a great hero, but his self-doubt often fires back at him. Sam Wilson is also very stubborn, which can cause issues with fellow teammates and lead to conflict. Sometimes it's okay to be stubborn, but as Captain America, again, it may backfire on him. Like Steve Rogers, Sam Wilson is very adamant about his views and beliefs, which is great, but compromising with others may be difficult when it comes to that. While there aren't necessarily weaknesses, there are various situations where Sam failed to come out on top. Sam Wilson gets webbed up by Spider-Man in Civil War, where Steve was able to give the webhead some difficulty in his first fight. I hate you. Sam also failed to protect the Avengers compound from Ant-Man in the first Ant-Man film. It's really important to me that Cap never finds out about this. Sam wasn't able to fight the Winter Soldier as well as Steve did in the Winter Soldier film either. And one moment that I think is very important is Sam's failure to peacefully resolve the Carly situation in the finale of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier show. Again, these aren't specifically weaknesses, but it shows that Sam has a long way to go to learn from his past fights as he moves forward. So that's my debrief on the two versions of Captain America. Now for what we've all been waiting for. Who would win in a Captain America versus a Captain America fight? Well, obviously, it's John Walker. Good morning, America. All right, all right, I'll stop messing around. But this is a hard question to answer. While doing research on this topic, I surely thought that Steve Rogers would take the cake. But after talking about it here, you just can't knock Sam Wilson out of the question. Both are incredibly skilled fighters in the MCU, and there is footage to back that up. Of course, both of them fell short at times, but it's the reasons why they fell short that matter here. Yes, Steve Rogers is a super soldier, and Sam Wilson is just a human with great skills in tech. But Sam Wilson showed that he can put up a fight as Captain America against various super soldiers over the course of his Disney Plus show. So that right there can't be a reason for Steve winning in my opinion. I think when it comes down to it, it's their personality traits that really affect them in the course of battle. Will Sam's lack of self-courage cause him to fall short? Or will Steve's mindset of protecting his friends cause him to fall short? Both are huge qualities that play a major factor when it comes to fighting a friend. Yeah, okay, Steve Rogers took out some pretty crazy villains one-on-one, -on -one, whereas Sam struggled to do so in some scenarios. But I personally don't believe you can decide this fight based on who defeated more powerful villains, at least on that standard alone. I think some of Sam's strengths play to Steve's weaknesses and vice versa. Don't worry though, I'm not going to say this fight would end in a tie and the two hug it out. That would be a cop-out and just way too boring. Maybe it doesn't need to be done. I believe on the surface level, Steve Rogers would win. But if you really look at all the factors in play, I think Sam Wilson's Captain America would come out on top. Truly, I do. And I'll tell you why. Yes, the two are very good friends and they have a lot of history together. But I think that plays into Steve's weaknesses more so than Sam's. Steve has had some moments in the comics where he had to go up against fellow teammates and he just couldn't pull his punches to get the job done. You can also kind of see this in Captain America Civil War, where there was that internal struggle to fight against his fellow Avengers in order to save Bucky. In the same film, you didn't really see Sam struggle to fight fellow heroes, even if he didn't come out on top. I believe on top of his ability to fly and use both close quarter and long range combat, Sam Wilson's ability to go up against something he believes goes against his views and beliefs gives him the upper hand in this Captain America vs. Captain America fight. I'll be honest though, you could persuade me that Steve Rogers would win this fight. It's a close call, but I'm going with what I believe is right at this moment. Sam Wilson just has that dog in him. He's got the grit, skills, and mindset to keep him going. Can Steve Rogers do this all day? Sure. I mean, he only says it 20,000 times throughout the MCU. I can do this all day. 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 Yeah, I know. But I don't think he can do it all day when it comes to fighting his friends. 
I don't care if he's a super soldier or not. I am 99% sure that Sam Wilson can come out of this fight on top if he plays his cards right. I have to end this video before I change my mind. Roll the outro! This is a debate that I could talk about for hours, and quite frankly, I'm not sure if I'm 100% with my current answer. Who do you guys think would win in a Captain America versus Captain America fight? Let us know in the comments below, and make sure to subscribe and put on those post notifications so you don't miss out on our content.